Sounds like Corey Coleman. Hey, you know what? <laughs> I want to be the black Stan Lee when I <laughs> without the money. <laughs> you could be Black Lee. But yeah. <laughs> Spike Lee comes in. I'm one Black Lee. You know, there shouldn't be another. along with our Amazon pay button, put in your username, put in your password. It's safe with us. Don't worry about it. Press enter. Ooh, what is that? I feel Carlos. Look at, ooh, Carlos. Look at his nostrils getting big. Like, <laughs> Toasted goodness all over your body. Certain person who has left us today. As I said, I'm talking about Pikachu. Pikachu is going to be <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Play, play with me, they saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we read, you know, he gave us uh, some good years, man. Shocking people's asses. No, 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 that's the Pikachu trailer later. I'm getting them all mixed up right now. Girl, where you going? Oh, yeah, where she, are we talking? That is some goddamn disrespect right there. We talk about Stanley. She just gets up. Oh, oh, baby. Oh, oh, she, oh, look at her. She's getting, she's getting prepared. Oh. Tissues or something? Yeah. <laughs> no, she. We, you know what? He, we mentioned Pikachu, and even Pikachu had to make an appearance and said, "You know something? I gotta pay respects to the man, <laughs> Stanley, right there." <laughs> he said, "Pika, pika," which means "Rest in peace, Stanley." <laughs> I thought she was giving some disrespect, Stanley. She like, "Fuck that!" She just walked. <laughs> She's like, "My ass." <laughs> yeah, Stanley. He is no longer with us, as my wife said. Now, I also want to let everybody know, man, dad, dad at ninety five. We are not only here to not be sad about his life, but to celebrate it. And there's so much to celebrate with this man that we're doing a two-parter. And you know, this is one show where somebody, you know, that, that main funny book boy mm -hmm. that, that is part of the crew, you know, my, my man that I've been doing this with for years, Martin Thomas, is not here, but he will want to talk about this. So we'll have him on the show tomorrow right now. This is, a, this is the first part. We might even repeat some of this tomorrow. But Oz, you are a big fan, and we had to let you come in and give your tribute too. Oh, yeah, big time, man. It was funny because uh, you you told me about the news. I was getting out to the gym, and you you texted me. and said, oh, man, Lee's out the game, son. I was like, what? Spike Lee? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. And all, and all I could imagine is Spike Lee going into heaven doing his dolly shot that he likes to do in his movies all the time <laughs> that's how he's heading to heaven <laughs> i want to say because you know everybody knew that this day was coming yeah and actively talked about it like oh they better hurry up and finish you know uh filming for stan lee's gone or they better you know uh uh do some future ones and put them in the can just in case waka 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 oh are they yeah we better make a cg stan lee so we can keep doing cameos yeah. you know exactly yeah but man keep on you know it's uh you know, everybody knew it was going to happen, but it still hurts. You oh, know yeah. What I mean, I I'm just happy that, you know, he was able to see his creations finally done right. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's funny because you and I talked today mm -hmm. and, you know, the, the thing that everybody yelled out, the thing that everybody cried out when they heard that Stan Lee was dead. You probably already know that one word. Excelsior. Mm -hmm. Excelsior. <laughs> Excelsior. See, he's recording knowing that he was going to go one day. So he put out a few. <laughs> Get him out the way. <laughs> few Excelsior's for people out there. For the future. <laughs> for the future, yeah. <laughs> you know, when I'm gone, I want Excelsior. I want enough Excelsior's for everybody out there. And it's funny, I said, after, you know, after all these years, like Stan Lee just made it sound so good that it was almost like it was his word. You know, it, like we never thought about what it meant. We just said, "Oh, that's Actually, a Stanley thing." I was thing. just thinking about it. Like, what does it mean? Yeah, that's, and we all said, "That's a good question." After all, you know, all my life, I've heard Excelsior <laughs> and didn't know a goddamn thing about what that meant. It, it, it could have been a racial slur or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> could have been cold for nigger or something. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you are Excelsior. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Uh, I looked it up right before the right before the show. <laughs> I was like, "Wow, that was it." And unless he's lying, it really is a racial slur. He says here, because uh, it's it's right here. Uh, the back in uh, 2010, this went up, so it was there. It's this from Stanley himself, the real Stanley, as you see right there. Finally, what does Excelsior mean? 
upward and onward to greater glory. That's what I wish you whenever I finish tweeting. Excelsior. So it's a good thing. <laughs> nope. I think he said that after he he was drunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the word you say when you're drunk. Excelsior. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, he's trying to say exactly or something. <laughs> Am I right? That is Excelsior. <laughs> Excelsior. That's badass, man. I know. <laughs> I don't even think comics would be as cool today because comics is not it's not a nerdy thing anymore. Comics are mainstream now. Uh, you know, everybody reads comics. And, you know, honestly, back in the day, everybody used to read comics. Athletes, you know, the, uh, uh, models. And, you know, everybody knows Spider-Man, Batman, all, and they read about them a little bit. And, the, and you know what? And the reason why, because Stan Lee, he made comics cool because he looked cool. Mm. Stan Lee always looked like he made porn instead of comics. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always looked at that and I said, Stan Lee was he like looks the- like He looks like Hugh Hefner's cousin or something like that. He was like the Hugh Hefner of nerds, you know, or comics. Yeah, yeah. he was He was a kind of revolutionary too, man. The way his approach to making comics, it was very socially conscious. You know, all these uh, characters or metaphors for things that were going on in that time, you know, as they were creating these comics, you know, the, the X-Men, you know, were, uh, you know, black people trying to, you know, because they were, it was used, uh, the X-Men the were mutants were used they were oppressed yeah like the x-men yeah he you know what uh let me see here did he make the black he used, uh, professor well? x yes the professor x was the martin luther king of that of that comic and magneto was the uh uh, uh damn my malcolm x of that universe the malcolm x like, of that universe yeah man you know we, what and i'll yeah, let me he, look at let me look at made this black panther you know, yeah. black superhero, you know, it was crazy. Marvel, yeah, you because my wife asked you to do Black Panther. The, the man brought us so many things. You see the X-Man, the Hulk, Spider-Man, uh, 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 you can go on and on with Black Panther. He would he did where when DC was out doing these heroes who were pretty much do-gooders or you know, almost invincible, in, 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 in you know, in, uh, indestructible. <laughs> Uh, Stan Lee's thing, his approach to making superheroes was to make them have human, no, they're these super powered people who still had human problems. Yeah, it was it was amazing what he what he did, man, with the uh, with comics and the approach that he took. And I think that's why I always bought Marvel comics over DC comics. Not that I, had, I look, Batman's one of my favorites, so I didn't have a, you know, it's not like I, I prefer one over the other. It's just that I can relate to these people, as you said, Oz. The X Men were people who were going through civil rights struggles. Yeah, it's an allegory for that. Yeah. And whether Stanley was uh, creating or co-creating, you know, he definitely tried to make sure to put put forth those sensibilities in the characters that were being created, you know, to, to hold those type of standards. So, you know, he was definitely a, a forward thinker, that Stanley. Yeah, and, and the funny thing is, man, for years, like like today, you know, we have all the Marvel movies, but back in the day, when he was doing this, he did not have the rights to those characters, man. You know, yep. back in the day when we had old Swing and Stan, you know, we thought he, we thought he like, of course, when because everybody knew Stan Lee so well, and we'll continue with, with our memories of him tomorrow. But everybody knew Stan Lee so well, and he was such a god to us. He was a god, a grandfather, a father, an uncle, and we thought that he, you know, he created this universe. He owned everything, but for years he did not, man. Even for years yep. at the time, like a lot of people, even comics was considered to be such a, a kitty thing that. Uh, he was even shunned by people who considered themselves legit uh, 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 journalists or authors, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, literary people. They just they treated this guy like shit, man. Yeah, well, you know uh, that Marvel was in well, went into bankruptcy, and I'm sure Martin will go into detail about this tomorrow mm -hmm. tomorrow as well. But yeah, I think they're going to bankruptcy, and to keep afloat, they had to license out a lot of their characters, which is why we're in this problem now, where Marvel doesn't own certain uh, characters like Spider Man and. You know, for when Fox had them, they had the uh, um, the Fantastic Four for a while. Uh, so yeah, they, they had to uh, pimp out some of their characters so they can keep afloat. Yeah, yeah, which is the the point of frustration today. Like I said, man, died at ninety five. Hey, listen, that's that's why I'm not too sad because look, we all we all got to go sometime. This man lived longer than most and gave more than most. Yeah. I mean, you know, he gave he, he a lot of our cultural relevance that we have today our references mm -hmm. the things that we you know one of the biggest things about all of our childhood think about this even for people who don't like comics they still know they mm -hmm. still know all these characters 
you know, for all for people who even like comics, they can tell you. And I, they can not only tell you about Spider Man, but they can tell you who his aunt is. They can tell you where he yeah. lives. They can tell you the, the the newspaper he works for. A lot of these, yeah. you know, that that's. that's that's, yeah, that's it's, remarkable. It's, yeah, it's this is it was, Stan Lee dying is like Michael Jackson dying for me. That's the only reason why I got choked up today. That's a him. good analogy. You know, that's definitely a really, really good analogy. You know, it's definitely a case where he's. You know, it's <laughs> it's like when somebody creates a color. You really mm-hmm. can't, but he did. You know, and and it was this world of comic books where you can go in and kind of lose yourself or identify yourself with these different characters that were created. And uh, it holds the test of time. There's stories that were created back then and now. You keep retelling these stories over and over again. So, you know, these characters will live on beyond him, of course, and beyond us. And it's just a a testament of what, uh, like I said, the uh, the foresight that he had and the people working around him had to, uh, you know, just keep these characters grounded, man, and just make them, you know, uh, um, uh, lifelong. And Stan Lee was such a huge part of my upbringing man of my life uh you know of me uh being part of who i am Mm -hmm. forming my forming my life i was like the only reason why i got choked up and almost shed a tear today because it's not because the man is gone because we all have to go it was because just that part of my life is gone you know what i mean yeah you know it's it's weird because you know you you see these uh these uh figures you know and and they are part of your life from when you were young and you see them in your mind there's no way they can leave you know, there's no way they can die and then all <laughs> yeah, of a sudden you hear yeah. wait a minute they're gone what do you mean that person's gone and it really shakes you to the core mine is you know i never met michael jordan i don't want to meet michael jordan but when he goes i'm like wow <laughs> you know that yeah. one's gonna hit me. yeah that one's gonna hit me yeah and you know uh <laughs> At 95, I, I think the man could have still, I think he could have had five more years, man. I think he could have made That's it right. to, I think he could have made it to 100. Uh, and, yeah. and, and the only yeah. reason why I say that he probably chose to go now, I think he probably chose to go because he was tired of the bullshit. I, I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's for, you know, it, it, he got out just in time because his life was, his life was, uh, was, was, uh, was, it was good. It was going into turmoil. At, at yeah. this point, man, it, you know, it, 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 and I hate to, hate to, hate to even mention these things because this is a guy deserved to go out without all that nonsense going on in his life, man. It was last July that his wife died, mm-hmm. Joan, Joan, yeah, yeah he, uh, she, she, uh, yeah, 2017, she died, man, and he was married to her for 69 years, man. Wow, 69 years. Some well, people don't even live that long. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And I think it was just it, that didn't help. It's just like, man, this person who's been yeah. such a part of my life for so long. Oh, I don't, man. you know, you always hear people dying of a broken heart and whatnot. Now I don't know how much I buy into the, the broken heart part, but I do think that a person who's kept you going for so long when they leave, yeah, you know, they some people who are older, they're just kind of like, well, you know, that that thing that kind of kept me going is gone, and I think yeah. I'm ready to go too. Well, it's between that and then you hear stories of how his daughter was really ab- almost abusing him. Yeah. You know, yeah, you know, it was. Make, make him go to signings and all this craziness. It was, yeah, it was that report. Weird, it was weird. I don't know, I don't know the whole specifics of it, but I, I've heard, uh, you know, rumblings of that. Well, I'm looking on uh, USA Today, man. You know, the, the, there were the allegations of uh, elder abuse. You right. Know, it says daughter triumphs in court over a former manager. You know, this, uh, yeah, he was, uh, the articles of el- uh, elder abuse that were going on uh, where people were taking advantage of his money, taking advantage of his health condition at the time. Damn. You know, it's a, it, it, uh, it, you know, for this guy, and you hate to hear it because this is a guy who was so full of life when you saw him, even in his eighties, man, that guy was, yeah. and Sprite don't even, Sprite don't even get, begin to touch the word that he was, uh-huh. you know what I mean? He was, he, he had to re- put a, a, a restraining order on a, on a, on a manager. Uh, because really? uh, because the guy was misappropriating his 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 funds and so yeah. it, you know Stop. like something you say for like a stalker you know somebody who's handling your money you have to put a restraining yeah. order on them. Uh, That's up. Yeah, because the, the like Stanley, of course, he was a millionaire. How, let me ask you, Oz. Yeah. How much do you think Stanley was worth when he when when he died today? Oh, yes. Once he was worth. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh man, I think my man got railroaded. Maybe he had a couple. Hundred thousand to his name, maybe. Yeah, not that much. Did he not? Because at one time, couple of hundred. A couple, a, a, a couple of hundred what dollars? No, a couple of 
thousand. No, a couple hundred thousand. Hundred thousand because at one time, Stan Lee, and not too long ago, I believe Stan Lee was worth seventy million dollars. Yeah, at some point, yeah. Yeah, some point. So I don't know what happened with his funds that 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 it went down. If it did, I because I didn't even know that it went down that low. A couple of hundred thousand dollars for real. That's that's what I read. You know, I, I don't you know don't, don't quote me. <laughs> what what no? But what's it, up? But it Pull wasn't that chair. much. What, yeah, because I want to I want to hear this, man. What what like a couple of hundred thousand? No, maybe had maybe he had a couple of millions but not that much because the whole problem is that he never actually had the rights to the characters and the main world that always belonged mm. to marvel so like he he had a couple of funds he invested in other areas he would go to cons he would make a lot of money just in con visits if we compare him to a normal person yeah let's say he was rich but if we can uh, let's say if we compare him to robert donna jr he doesn't even come close to him what about Robert Downey yeah. Jr.? Oh man, no, 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 like, <laughs> no I'm messing with. You. <laughs> no, fuck you. I don't know. I don't know who this but Junior you, is, but Junior. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. And yeah, he. But he had to sue Powell, man, for stealing his name and likeness. I think he even lost that. This guy was going through so much uh, at the uh, at the end of his uh, at the end of his life, man. And I just he, I just think that it was time for him to like. Sometimes you just there's so much going on. It's just like wow, the enthusiasm's not there anymore. So I just don't feel it anymore. And I think he, he was gone because of that. You know what? I would disagree. The whole thing with Stan Lee is that in his comic book career, it took off as soon as he started, right? It took a little bit of time. But he didn't hit mainstream until, I think, spy, you know, the first X-Men movie hit, when people started actually knowing his face. Because it's not until the 90s that X-Men gets released into theaters that you don't associate the name Stan Lee with his face. So technically, he started pretty old. The X-Men, even though he didn't have that property, that was one of the times that comic book characters, besides Batman, really start to go mainstream. Uh, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, you know, Blade, you know, people don't want to, people keep playing Blade. That is true, man. That is true. <laughs> it was one year earlier, and he did not make a cameo in Blade. No, <laughs> but he, he made a cameo not. in X-Men. In X-Men, that was his first cameo. That was his first cameo. To my, to my knowledge, yes. This is Mike. Mike says, and, okay, first of all, you got it wrong. They said the Mexican motherfucker was wrong. No, he's the Puerto Rican motherfucker. Uh, they say X Men was not his first cameo. Which one was it then? Well, I'm gonna read this right here. He <laughs> said, Jay, "He said Lee first had a cameo in the Hulk movie." Let me see right here. And, 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 you have no choice. And, 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 oh, was it the TV movie? No, the Incredible Hulk. It has to because the Incredible, the Incredible Hulk is 2003. This might be a joke too. Let me see. Jesus! Shit, Damn! What the hell's going oh, on? Was that? Was that it? That was it. That was it. That was, it. That was, it. That was, it. That was so short. That was it. Yeah. He was yeah. part of the jury. I'll say yes, but it was so quick. But I, I'll say some, some. Look, somebody's going. Somebody's going to point it out. So yes. Yeah. We'll, we'll make. Okay. We'll take it. We'll take it. That was Mike. We'll take it. We got. We got to put an asterisk next to that. Yeah. We'll in the video. We'll put an an asterisk next to that. Uh, let me see here. Even Maven Cree says, oh, she followed up too. Stan's first cameo. Before he did his cameo in X-Men 2000, he played the jury foreman in 1989's The Trial of the Incredible Hulk, or 1989's Trial of the Incredible Hulk. So there he is right there. He's like an extra there, though. He's not doing anything. But it counts. Stan Lee uh, did not make a cent from the Disney acquisition. Um, but he reportedly had a comfortable salary of a million dollars from Marvel every year for life. Every year for life. Okay, yeah. so that's man, that's a good deal. That's good. That's yeah. a good deal for doing nothing. You know, no, what I mean? it's, yeah. great. it's yeah. great when you consider like somebody like Jack Kirby got shit. You know, Jack. Kirby yeah, Jack for, Kirby is another for like people like my wife and who don't know Jack Kirby is a. Uh, was somebody else co-creator co okay, of a lot of these things right here. And those guys argued a lot about, you know, who okay, contributed let's, the let's most to Let's be clear. What. When we say, like, Stan Lee's amazing, Stan Lee's the awesome, there's a lot of shit that Stan Lee didn't come up with. Stan Lee, to the end, it was a writer. And we all a lot of this stuff because he collaborated with Jack Kirby, and that friendship was what made Marvel comics. It's when it's all said and done, they always put co-creator. 
Yeah. You know, he never, Stanley never came out and said, I did this myself, you motherfucker. No, and you he know never something? Did that. Yeah. yeah, and you're right. And with those two going, uh, you know, with the, always having this in, internal struggle with them, uh, they still manage to influence each other mm -hmm. and make each other as great as they are. You know, Oz, I want to hear this story because Stan Lee, one of, the, one of the things that Stan Lee is known for, Stan Lee is known for his cameos. And a lot of people say, the cameos that he did in movies. And I would actually come out and say, no, Ca uh, Stan Lee did cameos in people's real lives. Everybody got a Stan Lee story. Yeah. Yep. Baby, you don't even know it, but you met Stan Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Stan Lee was in Istanbul at some point, and you didn't know. If everybody has this brush up with Stan Lee, Stan Lee just appeared in everyone's life at one point. Uh, and I know Oz and I were talking today about some things that Stan Lee, uh, that our, our, our brush with the lead mm -hmm. and what yeah what what was yours man no it was cool i was at uh e3 in la i forgot what year it was but uh, e3 is a video game convention that they have in la and i forgot they were doing some marvel versus whatever game and he was there signing autographs and i got online to uh <laughs> to uh to, to get something signed and i was up there you know trying to be cool and i said hey stan what's up son <laughs> of course <laughs> and he was like oz what's up <laughs> I think he was right there with you, man. Is that the one? Yeah. He was like, "Ah, what's up? Where's my five dollars?" <laughs> like, oh. Well, because my name was on my lanyard, so that's how he knew my name. But he was so quick with it, you know, and he seemed very genuine. You know, he wasn't there trying to, you know, you know, uh, be condescending yeah. or anything like that. He just kind of went with it, and he just shook my hand and said, "Oh, man, thanks for coming by, man. Really appreciate it." Everybody talks about how maybe they're interaction with him was brief but it was always mm. memorable man yeah even when he didn't say shit to you it was memorable because <laughs> I, I i you know i i look at my life like a movie you know and and, and i think uh stan lee made a, uh, a cameo in my film and <laughs> it, <2 a. m. laughs> <laughs> no the Corey Coleman story <laughs> and no he probably did <laughs> back there at the bar <laughs> picking up some chick <laughs> You know who I am? <laughs> but, <Celsius. laughs> no, I was at I was at Comic Con. Another, did I ever see you at Comic Con over in San Diego? I no, I never met. Okay, no, I was out there at Comic Con one year before I met you, sweetheart. And uh, I was uh, I was in an elevator, and I, and, I, and I kept looking at this guy because I rode this elevator. It was it was slow. It was about a minute. And I was just me and this other guy in there, and I kept looking over at this guy and I'm like, damn, dude looks like Stan Lee. <laughs> but I, you know, I was like, I ain't gonna believe it. I'm just riding an elevator with Stan Lee, and he was by himself. He was by himself. Yeah, he was. He, that's that's why I couldn't really believe it because it was just a dude just chilling, man, mm -hmm. and dude, just like Stan Lee. And then, and I'm just like, all right, this dude looks just like Stan Lee. I bet he gets a lot of people come up to him. Uh, elevator door opens. He steps out, and a couple of people like Stan Lee. And he's like. That's me, everybody. And I was like, oh shit, Stanley. So I stand the doors just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> like, stupid. Yeah, yeah. And my dumb ass said, nope. <laughs> I had this whole time to actually have a conversation with Stan Lee, man. And I didn't, uh -huh. I didn't do it. Uh, and I, that's one of the things I regret, especially today. Yeah. And I, you know, I didn't. You got to meet him at least. What's that? You got to see him in person. I got to ride the elevator with yeah, him. Yeah, man. Like, and by, yeah, and by the way, he farted. So. <laughs> He just had, you know, he had he had stage presence that he just perfected over the years. That was another great thing about him being a comic book guy is that he wasn't this shy dude working on a, you know, on, on little nerdy stories behind a desk. He was a showman. Well, you know, he was he was. He a, looks like he loves yeah. that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was a performer. You know that he would he knew how to go out and interact with people. He knew how to work the stage. He knew how to, he, he he knew how to give the people what they wanted. This guy was better than some paid comedians and performers that would go out. He's no Bob King, he's no asshole. He was a man of the people. And I think that's the most important contribution. You might say the characters, I just say the persona, the yeah. character that's, that he was. And that's the vibe you kind of get from this man when you see him walking around, when you see him talking, you know, even when in his off time, people talking to him. Every, nobody had, I have never met anybody had a bad thing to say about this dude. Sounds like Corey Coleman. Hey, you know what? Yeah. I want to be the black Stan Lee when I go, <laughs> without the money. <laughs> you could be Black Lee. But yeah. <laughs> Spike Lee comes in, I'm one Black Lee. You know, there shouldn't be another. It would not be appropriate to talk about Stan Lee without talking about some of the many cameos that he's done. He's almost become known for his cameo appearances because we always see him in movies, babe. Now, you've probably seen a 
Marvel movie. I know you went to see Black Panther with me. Mm. And that, the, the guy I'll came. See there too? You know what? If you wonder about who's old white dude, everybody's clapping for that. I don't know. It was probably Stanley. Uh, <laughs> there you are. Yeah, because a lot of people do that. Because I went to go see Black Panther with my mom in um, even the third viewing. Because she went to see it twice. I think that was my fourth time seeing it. And there were still people who were uh, kind of slightly laughing or like, oh, look at that. Or like giving a little bit of applause for Stanley. And my mom was like, is he supposed to be somebody? <laughs> it's like, nah, don't worry about him. <laughs> it, it was cool to see them Black Panther because that was the big question. How was he going to make his cameo in Black Panther? Yeah, exactly. Black, it, with a black face. In blackface. <laughs> yeah. yeah. so, hello, all you Excelsiors. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of yours. Some of my favorite cameos. I'm going to talk about five of them. I'll, I'll make this quick. I think my favorite, my, my, my number five favorite cameo from, 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 Stanley, and like I said, it's not a movie I don't even enjoy a whole lot, but I thought it was a good comic book moment. It is from, you want to take a guess? Maybe Spider Man 3? No, it's Amazing Spider Man, the one with uh, oh, Garfield was, in it. I was close, I was close. You were close. The one with Gar, uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, Andrew Garfield. And, Andrew Garfield. And you know which one it is. It's the one where he's uh, he, uh, Spider Man is fighting the lizard, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and Stanley is on his uh, headphones. He doesn't hear a thing that's going on. Oh yeah, that part was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> got taken out. <laughs> got knocked out. He's none the wiser. Bam! He's like, <laughs> he's, Spider Man, like help me stand. But you know the reason why I like that is because. The movie might be a little mediocre, but it is a really it's a it's a clever cameo because they work him in with the action. It's just not him popping up and saying something funny. It's a clever way to work him into the action. It's a really great comic book moment that they do right there. Like the framing that's going on with that when he oh, stopped yeah. the when he stopped the table. That's yeah. a panel from a comic book. Let's go to number four. Now this one's a little different because this is not from a movie, baby. This is actually from a video game. And no, it is not the latest PS4 game. Uh, I don't know if people remember. I'm sure you do if you like the game. But from Amazing Spider-Man 2, the video game, this was a great cameo for this reason right here. Hey, help. My glasses are all fogged up. <laughs> <laughs> you get to carry Stan Lee's dead body out of a building. <laughs> no, no, he's not. Too, it looks like, it looks like he's dead, but you get to no, say his glasses are foggy. That's all. Okay, look, see, I told you she was a fan. Like you can't you can't kill Stan. I won't allow it. No, you get to you get to save Stan Lee. Hey, how'd you like me to call the Daily Bugle and tell them that Jameson is full of it? <laughs> I'm not gonna stop you. So yeah. long. You tell him he's an asshole. <laughs> but that was that, awesome. that is cool because. You, you playing the game, you get to save Stan Lee. And how many times? I mean, it's one thing to watch Stan Lee in a cameo. This is you being, being able to interact with Stan Lee. Not only interacting with him, but saving his life. And it helps that it's the real voice of Stan Lee. That's the, that was a very cool moment for a lot of people that played that game. Uh, let's go to number three for our cameos. This one is more of a sentimental favorite of mine as of today. At first, I thought, okay, it's cool, and it is very cool. I thought it was uh, something that explained a lot as far as the rest of his cameos when I say that you probably know what I'm talking about. But number three is from Guardians of the Galaxy, volume two. Oh, man. Anyway, before I was so rudely interrupted, <laughs> at that time, I was a Federal Express man. <laughs> you know, and that's, that's a reference to, some people say it's out of... Uh, it's 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 not timed right that cameo he's talking about past cameos mm -hmm. and they say that uh actually he got that wrong as far as uh the timing of that particular cameo that's some real nerdy shit to go deep with but i will say that the reason why I, that became my third favorite today is because with him dying and those characters are the watchers you, you know they see everything in the marvel universe i only does explain kind of how stan lee just gets to go around all these marvel movies and appear as different people mm -hmm. but with him being gone now, I imagine that he's somewhere talking that way to something, to some being. <laughs> some, you know, some, I imagine he's telling stories about his life here on Earth. I imagine he's talking about the movies and the cameos. I think that that, uh, you know, it's, it, it just feels appropriate for, for, for this moment.
Number two. Now, this is where we talk about movies that I do not like. <laughs> and we're talking about Spider-Man 3. I need for number two. Because in Spider-Man 3, well, see for yourself. You know, I guess one person can make a difference. Enough said. It's you know that was that was great. That's not a good movie, but man, that scene like genuine Stan Lee. You know that's uh, mm. oh yeah, that like shit if, got to me. If you ever met Stan Lee, I mean, first of all, what they did with that, they took his catchphrase "enough said" or "enough said" and worked mm. it in very simple and, and, and in a very poignant scene. It's him really seeming like what Stan Lee would do. That seemed like a real human being. Yeah, it's an emotional moment, especially having Spider-Man as one character that always gets shed on by the public, by the Daily Bugle, and just having them telling him, no, you're doing the right thing. I know it's tough, but you got to stick with it. Yeah, it's yeah the between right that thing. and you know, that Spider-Man being his most favorite, his most famous character, it'd be cool mm. to kind of him come face yeah. to face with his like almost his first creation, right? And this, oh, look. But, but are you crying? Yeah, sure are you cool. crying? <laughs> <laughs> You're, how are you going to top number one? With your bitch ass over there crying. <laughs> what, what is number one, you think? I don't know. You got my two favorite right there. Um, shit. What is, what is my number one cameo from him? You, you over there talking shit. Now, what is it? Shit, I don't know. Maybe in, not. Those were, where, those were the two that I was going to say. Oh, you're going to say? Yeah. Like, okay, that's how I knew you would not get my number one. And my number one, and this is going to surprise a lot of people, because I cannot, oh, I, I cannot stand... This Kevin Smith movie, Mall Rats. Oh, you fucking cameo. Mall Rats. Are you, wait a minute. Are you saying because I don't like the movie? Is that why? No, you're... because I I know the cameo, but this is the cameo that you this, like. Let me tell you why. Because now, first of all, Mall Rats. This is this is a movie that almost that that Kevin Smith says was a big turning point for him because this was this was hated by the critics. But I will tell you one thing that I in in retrospect thinking about it, one of the things that I love here is. Stan Lee's cameo, which is more of an extended cameo. And the reason why I really like it is because for the reason I like the one in Spider-Man 3, this is Stan Lee coming in and being a, a human being. Dr. Doom wears body armor to conceal his own mangled form, right? Yeah. Okay. That was me beneath the armor you know now there's a lot mm -hmm. of things going on in that scene right there one he's a much better actor than jason Lee. In that scene. <laughs> yes, he is. you see did you see that baby you mean yeah. you can see that you know guys uh, well tell me what you did he seems <laughs> <laughs> yeah, acting with his eyes you know and his head and like they like that that didn't seem natural and but but stan lee felt completely natural also he was kevin smith got it he summed up his career Right there, what made Stan Lee so special and everything that he did, and uh, you know, and and maybe that's why Stan Lee did so well with that. But also, that was where he also captured the fantasy of Stan Lee being that dad, that uncle, that granddad that that you always wanted, and mm -hmm. you know, you could only get that out of a well-written scene, not a cameo. And I really think that that kind of sums up Stan Lee great, and uh, and and, I, and with that, I don't mean that's. Uh, like I said, I, I will have more tomorrow, but we shared a lot today, a lot more than I thought we would. I, you know, when you start talking about somebody you really love, oh, yeah. it's amazing how you can just go on. And uh, I, I thought this would be short, but I really, uh, you know, a lot of heartfelt emotions coming out here. I mean, this yeah. motherfucker ain't been crying. So, Carlos, man, save your tears for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't go dry today, man. We're here to celebrate. And even if somebody else won't give it to them, then yeah, look, we'll give it to them in our own special way right now. And I think... A lot of people out there, as I said, if there was one last thing to say about this man, it would be this. Can you please say Excelsior for him? <laughs> I must have absolute silence. Excelsior! Oh. <laughs> see? See? <laughs> Pussy. Not, 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 <laughs> you call, you yeah, did this. You, yeah. <laughs> you call me shit on me. Man, man fuck you. you know, man, yeah. it's, man, it's contagious. What you do to me, man? Oh, man. So, the exclusive on DT merch, we have the crying Carlos <laughs> and the crying <laughs> 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 oh, Get off me, man. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>